Hey guys, so this is my 1948 US made Singer 1591. It's a, uh, a class 15 machine, which basically just means that it uses a size or class 15 bobbin, um, one of the most popular sizes, really high capacity bobbin. Um, it has a vertical oscillating hook and a uh, direct drive 0.53 amp motor uh, mounted on the back side. Uh, also referred to as a potted motor because it looks like a pot just sitting on the back of the machine. So it's direct drive, so it's a lot quieter, smoother, uh, has less maintenance than a bell-driven machine. Um, Singer, as far as I know from this from this era, were the only ones doing this, and they only had it on two of their machines. So this and the Singer 201 are the only direct drive um, mo uh, sewing machines you're going to find. From that from that time period, so this is a phenomenal machine. I've had and I've restored probably probably close to a dozen 1591s. Um, you know, rebuilding the motors, replacing the wiring, doing standard adjustments, just kind of reviving them. This I cherry picked when <laughs> as I was going through and rebuilding these and just. Every time I get a nice one, I, I'd save that one for myself. And this is pretty much the nicest machine that, or and not pretty much, it is. It's the nicest 1591 that I've ever had or restored. Uh, it's in almost pristine condition. The paint is glossy. The, uh, the All the parts are all high polished still. I mean, everything you can see from the photos, it's just like, it's almost looks new. And could probably pass off as, you know, as new if you were looking from a foot away. So not only that, but it functions as if it was new. This this thing runs really well. Um, so yeah, so I'll do a little sewing some demonstration so you can see kind of how it functions and, and what um, uh, capabilities it has. Uh, a lot of guys on the internet are going to be touting this as a phenomenal, you know, vegetable tanned leather sewing machine that will sew through a yardstick and all this. Yeah, it can do it. And you can see demonstrations and photos posted all over showing that it's that it can do that I wouldn't recommend it um, and I certainly don't want this machine to go to go to somebody who's going to be running it through that kind of abuse uh, it'll sew vegetable tan leather but it definitely wasn't designed to uh, and I wouldn't recommend that as 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 your you know the primary purpose of this machine every once in a while maybe but uh, regularly no get get a, a, a machine intended for that like a uh, industrial walking foot uh, compound feed machine um, that's designed for it. So this is a home sewing machine. It's designed to sew you know everything from really lightweight muslin, satin, all the way you know up to multiple layers of denim if you're doing like uh, hemming on jeans no problem. This machine actually it feeds so much better than any modern machine that you're gonna find um, and because of the narrower feet too it has a lot of, of uh, you, you really can move everything around really easily. It's maneuverability of your pieces while you're sewing is, is a lot better than on a modern machine. It also has um, the ability to drop the feed dogs. So if you want to use a buttonhole attachment, uh, which makes phenomenal buttonholes, like way better than anything you would find on a modern machine, um, you, can, you can drop the feed dogs to use that. Um, and if you're doing free motion quilting, which you would change out the foot and put a put a quilting foot on there, uh, this is like the quilter's choice. Not only because it forms a really nice stitch and has the ability to drop the feed dogs, but also because the generous throat space here, and also the high visibility that you get on a on a machine like this. Any of the modern machines are going to be really bulky because there's a lot more internal. Um, components there to be able to uh, offer all those uh, stitches and there you know self threaders and the computers and there's just a lot going on this thing is straight stitch only super basic really it's user serviceable so if something happens to this you're not gonna have to run to a sewing machine repair guy every every time something goes out of whack uh, there's a lot of information on the internet um, and the thing is is basic. I mean, you're, it's not going to go out of time on the bottom. The hook is pinned in place. Uh, the only thing you would ever have to address in terms of timing would be the needle bar height. And that is literally one screw, and you just adjust the height. 
and there there are guides on the internet. Um, I may I may do a video on how to time a uh, vertical hook oscillating machine like this. Um, I have an industri I have the industrial version of this machine, which is a it's a bigger version. Doesn't have reverse or anything. It's it's very basic that I use. But this thing has forward and reverse, um, five to thirty stitches per inch. Uh, this knob here actually is a uh, stitch regulation adjustment. So if you're going to say do 15 stitches per inch, you loosen the knob, you raise it up from the bottom and tighten it down, and it limits the stitch length. So you, when you go in reverse, it will go in 15 stitches per inch in reverse. So you can your back stitching, your tacking will look really good. Same hole every time. And if you're doing various projects. Um, you can always find that same exact point so you can go forward and back and, and it makes uh, adjustment a lot easier. That's a awesome awesome thing that's on there. The uh, tension adjust range is huge on these. So you have a really broad range here, but even if it's not even if it's not even you know working for you, which it should, the single sew everything from you know text 20 thread, very fine thread all the way up to to 70. You might be able to get away with 90. I wouldn't recommend it. You're starting to push the limits of the machine at that point, but it'll sew with uh, Tech 70 thread, no problem. Like, that's like an upholstery, like a nylon thread, no problem. Um, but you can take this whole assembly apart. Uh, it's it, it's it's pretty empowering when you're able to work on a machine yourself, um, and it's an educational experience too. So I would recommend this machine for a beginner. Certainly, if you're a beginner. Um, you'll learn the basics and it's a lot more forgiving than a modern machine. There's not a lot that can go wrong and if something does, teach yourself and learn and and fix it yourself. You'll become a lot more you'll become a lot better equipped um, and a more knowledgeable um, sewer because of it. But even for the advanced sewers, uh, the capabilities of this machine far exceed any of the modern machines um, for the straight stitch. So you'll see a lot of people with a lot of years of experience will move back to a vintage machine or at least have one for maybe the heavier work that they're doing or free motion quilting or things like that because uh, it just sews so much better. So you'll see with the, um, I'll just start sewing and then just kind of keep talking as I go here. But uh, I mean it feeds really well and because of this narrow foot you can see how easy it is to maneuver your piece. And because of the really broad throat space, it's you don't have to worry, uh, you know, about uh, clearance problems. So you have forward, you have reverse, you go forward again. You can do really short stitches. That's almost 30 stitches per inch. And you can see how well it feeds. I mean, modern machines do not feed like this. And it's really consistent. And you can go all the way out to... Trying to look two places at once here. Five stitches per inch, which is the longest stitch. And this is two layers of denim. So if you're just sewing two pieces together. And let's go, let's do um, four layers. And you see how balanced the stitch is too between I used a, a bright green thread on the bottom so you could really see what the stitches look like. You can see on the um, 30 stitches per inch how fine those stitches are. I mean, it's really small. And you can see it's they're really well balanced too. And this is only two layers, so let's bump it up to, uh, to four. And you'll see the machine doesn't even hesitate through four. through four layers and uh, the stitches are still the same. Still really consistent, very straight. I mean, you're not gonna find a better looking stitch. They look really good. And also, one of the benefits too, if you're like, if you're making gear like, uh, you know, lightweight, sil nylon, you know, backpacking hammocks or something, which I've done on this, it's really good for those thin materials because the needle hole opening is really small. It's a straight stitch, so it's just a little tiny hole large enough to pass the needle through. 
which is a benefit because your your material isn't going to get pulled down into the machine like you would have on say like a uh, a modern wide zigzag stitch machine where that throat that hole that needle hole opening has to be a lot larger so it's going to pull the material down when you're working with thinner stuff so that's a, that's a real big benefit there um i also here's some uh this is upholstery grade uh leather but uh chrome tanned it'll sew through this i mean you can, i'll just do it i'll do four layers so you can see some of the capabilities of it it'll sew through it no problem basically anything you can fit under the presser foot it's going to sew and it has adjustable presser foot tension uh, pressure so you can back that off on the top if you feel like you're getting too much pressure on the material if it starts kind of scrunching like it did there so So you see this is four layers and the stitch looks just as good on this as it does on the denim. I mean that is a phenomenal, phenomenal looking stitch on this thing. So really capable machine, uh, really easy to use. It will definitely outlast you. Um, it's just, I can't recommend these enough. Even if you don't pick up this particular machine, highly recommend a vintage machine, although I would I don't want to discourage anyone from getting a vintage machine because I think they're they're awesome and I think people have forgotten how good they really are. But be be cautious when you're picking these up because the wiring on these um, really tends to go bad. This one's in great shape. This is the only one I've never had to replace the wiring on. But on every other machine I've had, 1591s and 201s both, I've had to totally rewire the motor and the lights because the... Um, insulation on the wiring just crumbles apart just disappears so you're running into you know fire and shock hazard especially on a fully on a metal machine like this you you don't want to risk it so unless you're able to do that kind of repair yourself and i encourage you to try it or you know at least take a shot at it um i wouldn't suggest just grabbing one of these randomly for you know twenty dollars off craigslist or something absurd uh because you're going to give yourself a little bit more headache than, than it's probably worth if you're not able to do it yourself. And you will end up spending more taking it to somebody to have them repair it than definitely more than you probably paid for it. So try to find one that's been refurbished. They go for a lot of money on eBay. Um, a lot, a lot of money. But that's only because a lot of those guys are putting the time in to properly restore them like this one's been. So... Totally encourage everybody out there. If you don't have a vintage machine, pick one up. I right now I think I own I own probably I have 14 machines. Most of them are vintage, um, and that's only because they they're that much better. Uh, I have modern machines. I mean, I even have one there, brother SE 400, um, and that, it's it's a fine machine. I thought it was a great machine until I really got into um, into the vintage stuff. So give these these machines uh consideration when you're looking they're awesome gifts too and awesome display pieces my wife doesn't sew at all has no interest um and she loves just she likes having this thing out like as a display piece because it looks cool um so you know win 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 all across the board on this thing great function great look great dependability um i can't say enough good things about them so uh, so there it is, this 1948 Singer 1591. Thanks, guys.